Good morning and welcome to this edition of San Diego People. I'm Paul Rudy. Today we are talking about the coronavirus pandemic and the nonprofit sector. Every day new data is coming in from around the world and here in the U.S. in relation to the number of cases. This past week life dramatically changed for millions of Americans as local governments put new health orders in place and told people to stay inside their homes. The pandemic is also having a big impact though on nonprofits who are out there trying to help the community. One non Profit called Options for All works with people with intellectual and developmental dis disabilities. Ken Barnes, the president and CEO of Options for All, joins us this Sunday morning to talk about his organization, how it's being impacted by the coronavirus. Mr. Barnes, yeah. welcome to KUSI. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking time out this Sunday morning. I bet. We've just uh, chatted briefly. I'm yeah. betting, like every nonprofit from coast to coast, a lot of your events have been canceled. Sure. We, our largest event of the year called the Tastes of Our Community uh, was scheduled for May 14th. Of course, we postponed that. Uh, and uh, But we're still making it work and, and rolling through. We have staff uh, all across the state, San Jose, Santa Cruz, San Bernardino, and here in our headquarters in San Diego. But these are not social events. These no. are fundraising events. It's they true. are the lifeblood of keeping what you do, something vital you do in the community, going. They are loss of revenue. Uh, uh, how can you make these events up or I mean, are you hoping that you're you can compress what you did in a year's time into the last quarter well uh, there will be a lot of phone calls happening to people uh, for sure but we are confident uh, you know it's sometimes you have to prepare for a rainy day and we've been around for 35 years and uh, we've very intently for a number of years focused on the what if sometimes something's gonna happen will it be a fire will it be a flood will it be some other natural disaster we didn't anticipate a pandemic no we did uh, not. but you know fortunately for us us, we've been able to I guess, say, store up enough to make it through uh, the bad times. We're still keeping our staff uh, paid and employed, and they're working from home. Maybe uh, one day when we all are on the other end of this, we'll talk about having a rainy day fund. Perhaps that will come up in our conversation, but I, I wanted to focus what you do. First of all, for yeah. people who don't know your organization, explain what you do. So Options for All, we service intellectually and developmentally able uh, disabled adults, about 1,400 uh, across the state of California, uh, more than half of that right here in San Diego County uh, around our headquarters we do mostly what's called community engagement programs and so our staff picks up people gets them out of the, who are stuck in their bedrooms stuck in their home watching TV and we engage them in the community and teach them social uh, interactions with other persons show other persons that just because someone has intellectual disability they're not odd or they're not or, the, or, should or, be yeah. the pariah all right so community engagement sounds like yeah. a lot of things that we can't do right yeah. now. <laughs> so social distancing and com community engagement seem to be at the opposite ends of the teeter-totter. So yeah. how do you keep doing that? Mm -hmm. So one month ago, after that very first case of COVID-19 was uh, diagnosed in Washington, uh, our staff went to work coming up with the what-ifs. And so just this past week, a couple of days ago, we launched uh, doing community engagement at a distance uh, via FaceTime, via phone. What we don't want are people to become socially isolated it and then have that anxiety build and for many of our program participants our staff are, are their only connection with the outside world right. or the only person that they really know and so we're excited to be able to while it's not the way that we designed the program to work we're doing everything that we can to continue is that going to be one of the perks that comes out of the COVID-19 crisis is that businesses such as yours nonprofits such as yours are going to learn there's another way to do this uh, as yeah. far as tech is technology going to change Technology perhaps saving the uh, nonprofit yeah. right now, or at least keeping it going, mm -hmm. is it going to change how you do business in the future? You know, I think so. I think there's some good that can come out of this. So with every crisis, it causes you to really dig inside, dig in, what can I do? How can I do it differently? And here's the thing. There's technology and ways that we've never used in our 35 years of existence that uh, we're deploying. We're trying different methods. Uh, some work and some haven't. And, and we're going to keep making those adjustments. I've, I've been here for six weeks, and I, I laugh. I did not anticipate the first six weeks on the job being yeah. this, but yeah. it's been a it's been a great drill uh, to see people just rise to the occasion and, and just come up with like great inventive ideas. Often in these troubled waters that we find ourselves in, you see the best of humanity and you yeah. see the worst of humanity. I think the worst of humanity would be reflected by the toilet paper yeah. flying off. The, <laughs> but the best of humanity can be reflected by your organization, other organizations who are now banding together in 
in these troubled waters and trying to help one another continue to serve the public. Absolutely. We've told other uh, nonprofits who are maybe a bit smaller or having uh, some challenges, if there's a way that we can support at a distance, uh, phys you know, not physically in person, we're happy to. I mean, and I think that's why we're here. We're all here for the public good. So if there's things that we can do to help someone else serve another population of persons, I think that's that's what we that's why we exist. And there's a number of people who are at home looking for work to do, and I would encourage them to reach out to smaller nonprofits around the community, maybe somebody that they've supported, and ask them, hey, is there accounting functions we can help you with? Is there something we can do remotely, administratively for you? And, and try to help keep these enterprises afloat. Because we, what we are talking about, and I, I know you are reflected on it, it's going to be a common theme yeah. throughout this program today, is that you have an isolated portion of the population mm -hmm. who now are going to find themselves even more isolated, and that can be beyond detrimental. Yeah. So uh, do, you f do you feel like, I guess, uh, do you feel the stress of that? I, I feel it for my staff. Uh, one of the things we encourage them all to take advantage of the employee assistance program. It's one of those things that sometimes people forget and they put in the back of their head and <clears throat> what we've really been driving to them is, hey, take advantage of the mental health services. It's okay. It's okay if you feel anxious, but talk to someone. There's, you know, there's help to be available. I would encourage others. Like, there's no shame in seeking mental health uh, advice. This is a time when, when we want to lean on those professionals. They're available by phone, and that's what we've really tried to encourage our staff to do that. Exercise at home. Still, you know, try to work out. Don't just let yourself get caught up in, in, in watching uh, and, and reading about everything negative that's happening. Let's expand on that because mm -hmm. I almost think watching news can be detrimental to your mental yeah. health. Well, because, I was going to say that since I'm here. Well, but. no, but no, and I, I don't take offense because I feel like because one, you you want to be as informed as possible, and I yeah. get that. And I, but you find yourself watching, you know, around the clock, and you just I, you feel your anxiety level go up. I mean, do you maybe yeah. take a little break. No, I, like for example, like Rock Church here in San Diego is like, and other churches have put their services online, and so if persons just hey, I want a break, I want something else to focus in on, they can do that for 30 minutes or 45 minutes for free, and I I think it's those types of things to just disconnect a little bit. Go, you know, play a board game with your family yes. members. You know, do if some push ups and sit ups. Yeah, if you remember <laughs> how. Uh, I'm happy to play Monopoly or Scrabble at a distance with somebody. I'm a king of those games. All right, uh, Ken, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, still ahead, local nonprofits are working to make sure you are, your needs, the needs of the youth are taken care of as well as the concern for coronavirus can grows. How the nonprofit Home Start is keeping children safe during this pandemic. We'll be right back.